guys, welcome once again to the Guy Vlog Podcast, except not doing the podcast. Well, I kind of am, but I'm not I'm doing the YouTube video again. So we're back to video, no guarantees, no promises. I can only tell you my plan is to take this, take the audio, put it on the podcast as well. However, back to the YouTube channel after a very very long layoff and for the few of you or the many of you that are following me and are wondering hey i've been subscribed to this channel since well i forgot i was subscribed to this channel and now i'm seeing that you're back and i went to look back when your last video was and whoa what the hell happened there so i could give you a million reasons i could tell you that you know, I didn't have the right camera set up. Maybe I didn't have the right lighting, the right set. Didn't have the right situation to give you the quality that you deserve. That would all be bullshit. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. The honest truth is I kind of slipped. <laughs> I slipped on video and I slept on it. So what basically happened was very simple procrastination you know i've been slow with the podcast and that has kind of bled over to even way slower with videos um i learned a lot about podcasting i love podcasting and i'm doing it more often however i did slip completely with the video which is why we are where we are now so what are we going to do we're going to do the only thing you can do move forward now if you are part of of this channel and you have subscribed to the podcast you know what I talk about it's, it's pretty simple entertainment starting with MMA wait can you see my hand oh haven't done the video thing in a while with MMA <laughs> starting with MMA wrestling and just entertainment in general so movies TV shows music whatever I feel like today I'm gonna be talking MMA but before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please go to iTunes. Search the Guy Blog Podcast, Orlando Rodriguez, always your host, and click that subscribe button. If you like what you hear, leave five stars. I will be very grateful. In the meantime, subscribe to this channel. And, you know, little bell thingy. Once you do that, you'll find out when I release a new video. And that way, if it takes me forever to do another one, you guys can message me and call me out on it. If, I, if I'm popping them out quickly and you guys are happy about that, you think, hey, Orlando, you're on your game, let me know that too. Hey, I'm good. I like positive reinforcement. I'm a happy guy. Uh, but hey, who doesn't like positive reinforcement? So having said that, let's get to today's topic. Uh, if I kind of filmed some, some B-roll and... Don't know if I'm going to keep it in or not yet, since I'm so, it's been so long that I'm practically new again. If I kept it in, I already said what it's about, but in case I didn't, we're going to be talking about Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Let's go. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson just lost a fight to Darren Till. A fight that everybody thinks he won. Do I agree? Do I disagree? Don't care. Shouldn't matter. Do I agree with it? Eh. Yeah, he should have won. Should he? Not really. Did Darren Till get a hometown discount? Probably. Does it matter? No. Because people at the end of the day just remember the record, not how it happened. So, having said that, let's go into why Wonder Boy is now in this position. Well, Wonder Boy had everything to gain. I mean, he was already number one contender. Nope. He had everything to lose by taking this fight. Darren Till had everything to gain. Wonder Boy had everything to lose. Darren Till, nothing to lose. You lose to Wonder Boy, hey, you lost to the number one. You're kind of new in the UFC. It's understandable. You're kind of crazy, but you're the future. Wonder Boy loses, and you're like, well... Your fights with Tyron Woodley were boring as shit. So, hey, you lost. 
our win as the UFC. Having said that, whether he lost or not is besides the point. I'm going to focus on a different aspect. I believe that fighters, all of them, have tendencies and their careers tend to be waves. Whether you're Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, Khabib, not going to even try his last name today, not feeling it, <laughs> or GSP. All fighters have these waves. And for some, it rises tall like a freaking 20, 20 foot tall, whatever the heck surfers, you know, half pipe. And for some, it's kind of like an even to up, down, like a little river. There are guys that seem to be on a constant high. There are guys that seem to be on a downward trajectory before they get back up. Ryan Bader, anybody? However, there are these flows in careers. And mind you, it's very difficult to notice it because fighters only fight two, maximum three times a year. So it's hard to catch it. It takes a couple of years. But it's been a couple of years with Wonder Boy. We can actually see what is going on with his career right, right now. And he's fallen into a trap. It's, it's a trap that happens a lot to champions. And in champions, that trap is accepted. And I'm going to explain why. It's a trap because as fans we kind of lose interest because of it. For fighters, it's a trap because unless you're a champion, it's an unforgiving trap. Now, what's the trap? Well, when you become one of the top five fighters in a division, there are expectations placed upon you. And some rise to it, some don't. Usually opportunities come fast and quick, and it's really as easy as, did you deliver? Meaning, did you become champion? Or did you fail? And then you go back to the back of the line. We're living in an era where we have a lot of divisions where there are top five guys, but the best of the best are so good that usually the top two or three are at least like a whole body length ahead of everybody else in the division. And that's where Steven Wonderboy Thompson is. Now what happens in these situations, and this is where the trap is, that you want to maintain that position. Of course, you want to be number one. Because you say, as long as I'm number one, I will get a title shot. And if I got a title shot and failed, as long as I'm number one, I will get another one. That's the trap. You see... You're counting on your number one status in the division, or number two, to keep you in title contention. The problem is that to keep that position, for some fighters, it means doing anything you can to be aggressive, ending, finishing fights, and, you know, if you're a, a talented striker, it's just to, to, you know, show how superior you are to everybody. However, when you keep facing the best of the best, you decide to stop taking those risks that make you exciting to instead fight a smarter fight, which is not a bad thing. As a fighter, to be clear, as a fighter, it is a good thing for somebody like Wonder Boy to fight smarter, longer career, better results, Winning, winning, winning. But what happens is that you have somebody like Wonder Boy, whose entire career is staked on him being one of the highest level strikers in all of MMA. All of MMA. Well, what do you expect from a striker? Because from a wrestler, we expect ground and pound, but at the very least, we know he's going to get on top, he's going to, you know, get side control. He's going to take his opponent down. He's going to control the match. He's going to control the dimensions. He's going to control where the fight goes. And a wrestler might have to grind out a victory on the fight cards. Because it might be a great wrestler that's not the best striker. Like Khabib. However, when you're one of the highest level strikers. When you're one of the best strikers in the world. Like Wonderboy. We expect you to finish a fight. 
We are expecting knockouts. We are expecting TKOs. We are expecting stoppages. We are expecting fighters to quit because of the pressure that you bring. However, for somebody like Wonder Boy to bring that pressure, to get that knockout, that TKO, to put a fighter in that bad position, you have to risk putting yourself in, in a bad position. And for somebody as smart and calculated as Wonder Boy, well, you decide, hey, I'm going to avoid that. And the way I can do that is I'm going to adjust my striking and focus instead on counter striking. Well, everybody that faces a high, well, 90% of fighters that face a high level striker know I'm going to be careful. I'm going to step back. I'm going to wait for him to make a mistake. I'm going to wait for him to open up with a strike that maybe allows me to take down or something like that. By doing that, what you end up is in a stalemate. A fight that goes five rounds with less than, what, 30, 40, 50 strikes exchanged or significant strikes. Why? Because nobody is taking any risks. When you put yourself in that situation, you've fallen into the trap. Wonder Boy and GSP, George St. Pierre, in the last three years, have the same amount of finishes. I will repeat that for you. Wonder Boy Thompson has the same amount of finishes in the last three years of his career as GSP. In the last three years, Wonder Boy has been in six fights. GSP has been in one. On top of that, one of them is known for being a finisher. The other one is not. And yet, here we are. Wonder Boy has become a decision machine. And, as other fighters have shown us, when you become a decision machine, decisions can go either way, no matter how good you fight. Because you're counting on perception, you're counting on the opinion of three judges that are going to say what I saw to me looked like Wonder Boy was being a better fighter. These judges are not at the level where they're counting like they do in boxing, significant. They are just looking. Who is the better fighter? Who looked like the aggressor? Listen to my language. Who looked like? No, Not who was. Who looked like he was in more control? Not who was. Because they're not trained at that level yet. So what that means is that the same way you ride that wave of decision victories, you can ride that wave of decision losses. And when it counts most, Wonder Boy has lost. So the fact that he lost to Till on the cards and that it looks like a hometown decision, if this was like Wonder Boy has finished five out of his last seven fights and he had a decision over Tyron Woodley and then this happened and, you know, hey, shit happens. I'd be like, hey, you know, it's unfair. He's a finisher. He's aggressive. He fights. But the reality is not that. The reality is Wonder Boy has two fights versus Tyron Woodley that have shown him that decisions are not your friend. They are not. If it's close, it's not going your way. So having that knowledge, you would expect for Wonder Boy to take a risk at the very least in the last round and try to finish a fight. To at the very least earn a 10-8. He doesn't do that. He didn't do that. And a lot of people, you know, smarter people than myself in the fight game, like a Joe Rogan, like a John Anik. You know, they might say, he's fighting the smarter fight. I do not disagree with that. However, the smart fight doesn't always win. Not when it goes to the judges. Because they don't know that you're doing the smart fight. All they know is, eh, he didn't do anything. Uh, the other guy was never in danger. The other guy was always moving forward, so I'm going to give it to him. And that's where you're stuck. So, Wonder Boy needs to learn from Benson Anderson and understand decisions are no longer your friend. 
you need to get back to finishing fights. The last man you finished was Johnny Hendricks. Who cannot finish Johnny Hendricks? Come on, man. Yes, you have victories over Rory. Yes, you have victories over Masvidal. You have these elite fighters that you have beat over a decision. You need to finish them if you want to be champion. Because if you ever get to see Tyron Woodley again, trust me, if it goes to decision, you are not getting it. <laughs> it's that simple. Every time you go back against him, people are expecting... Judges are expecting more. So come on, man. It, it's And this is a trap. If he were the champion like Tyron Woodley is, then it's accepted. You have a title. So whenever you fight, you're the main event. You're going to get the chances until somebody takes that from you. But in the meantime, it's understandable you're playing it a little safer. You have more leverage now. But if not, if you're just number 1 through 15, it's time to take risks. Stop it with, I'm playing it safe, I'm counter-striking till the end. No, you need to finish fights one way or another. Either that or you need to take a Brandon Till, who is hard-headed and tough and one of the best up-and-comers, and you need to show that technically you are so superior that you got one or two 10-8 rounds. You're not getting them. And if you don't get them, Judges won't score them. You're leaving it in their hands and they're not going to hand it to you. Sorry to say that. So, that's what I think. Now, I could be wrong. I have been before. Why don't you guys tell me what you think? Why is Wonder Boy? why did he lose versus Brandon Till and take out the whole judging? Why did Wonderboy Thompson, one of the best strikers in MMA, why couldn't he finish Brandon Till? And why has he not finished anybody in years? Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. <laughs> For real, guys, tell me why he hasn't finished anybody in years. And then I will understand why maybe he un he deserves another chance. But I don't see him going for the title anytime soon unless he starts finishing people again. He needs to get out of this rhythm. He needs to start finishing again. Decisions are not his friends. They are his trap. And he needs to escape that trap and get back to finishing fights. He needs to be more aggressive. If you disagree with me, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you agree with me, Leave a comment below. Let me know why. But let me know. And what else do you want to talk about? Tell me. Because I have an opinion on everything. And I mean everything. If it's wrestling, we can talk about the Hurricane, the 123 Kid, Shawn Michaels, why The Undertaker is still awesome. Anything you want. If it's MMA, we can talk Baz Bruton. We can talk the first UFC through the third UFC. We can talk Kazushi Sakuraba. We could talk Ryan Bader. Whatever you want, I will talk about it. If it comes to movies, though, I'm a Marvel guy, unless it's Batman. That's the only thing that matters in the DC Universe. Everything else right now, except what's on the, on the what is it, the CW? Black Lightning? That's awesome. But everything on the movie side that's not Batman sucks, <laughs> okay? But Marvel, just perfect. So, whatever you guys want me to talk about, just leave a comment below. Email me, Orlando, at theguyblog.com, at theguyblog on Twitter, on Instagram, and all that good stuff. As I said, subscribe, hit the bell, and then, you know, iTunes, go to iTunes, the Guy Blog Podcast, Orlando Rodriguez, your host. As always, a pleasure to talk to you, and talk to you guys soon. Take care.